Aside from terrorizing the American people with another liberty-destroying incident, this time in the bastion of American freedom, the city of Boston, and using the contrived event to place the city under martial law, forcing people out of their homes and into the streets with their hands on their heads like criminals, while militarized police violated their Fourth Amendment rights and searched their homes like a surprise shakedown in a prison. They know that a country divided against itself cannot stand. Get the people fighting against one another and they will never unite to take back their freedoms and they'll certainly never go after those who have taken them away. This is why the media is constantly fanning the flames of racism and major so-called stars like this piece of traitorous trash, back from her recent depopulation meeting with David Rockefeller, Bill Gates, and other eugenicists, comes under no fire for saying things like this. There are still generations of people, older people, who were born and bred and marinated in it, in that prejudice and racism, and they just have to die. This Carlos Arredondo story is part of a plan to influence the decisions of enough Americans that they acquiesce to an enormous step forward toward another part of the cabal's divide-and-conquer strategy, multiculturalism. The fancy name they've given the plan is immigration reform, but it's nothing more than amnesty and the introduction into the job market and more importantly for them, the voting base of tens of millions of illegal aliens currently within the U.S. Our liar-in-chief uses the figure of 11 million illegals here currently, so you know it's much higher than that. I've seen estimates of 20 million and up with an additional 10,000 illegals added every day because our borders are not secure. Those pushing for this amnesty bill tell us, we're a nation of immigrants, as if somehow the instant legalization of tens of millions of people, mainly from south of the Mexican border who chose to come here illegally, is something similar to the days of old when people came here from other countries, assimilated into the culture, learned English, and became Americans. This is something completely different. This is literally a New World Order-sponsored invasion. This is an out-of-control, inward flow of people into an already bankrupt, beat-down country that cannot afford them. Flooding a territory with masses of the poor in order to gain control of it is an old communist revolutionary tactic. The cabal knows that a strong society has at its foundation a unique culture and a common language. So these illegals are not encouraged to assimilate. Many of these people have no intention of learning the English language, something that was once required of all new citizens. That's why you have to press one for English. This is also why we have relatively open borders and incentives for people to migrate here illegally, to cause division in this country, drive down wages, and drive up competition for the few jobs that are left. This will ensure an eventual civil war scenario that will benefit no one but the Rockefeller bankster cabal. A lot of these immigrant pawns even subscribe to the ideology of Reconquista. They've been taught that states such as Texas, California, Arizona, and New Mexico have been stolen by the gringo. They call this area Aztlan, and they want to reclaim it and return the land to Mexico. The plot to do this involves a political and demographic revolution, replacing the Americans in the Southwest with an influx of illegal Mexican immigrants. I'm thinking a huge amnesty might help with that plan. According to Mario Obeldo, former head of MALDEF, California is going to be a Hispanic state. Anyone who does not like it should leave. There's so much interesting stuff from the 2010 census, and you're be told about how Latinos will soon be the majority in the Golden State. Now take a look at these percentage population figures. Now you see there in that red line, pick up about 75% of Californians. That's back in the 60s, but that number keeps on dropping here. This pink line, that's Latinos. That keeps there, and they cross. You see that there? Almost tied at Latinos with 40%. In 1998, Obeldo was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by Clinton. David Rockefeller got one too. I guess it's one of those oxymoronic awards like the Peace Prize. The Rockefeller cabal is actively working to transform the U.S. into a borderless society, a cornerstone of the globalist vision and the end game of world government. This movement is backed by racist groups like La Raza and Maldef, Hispanic supremacist lobbying groups that consider border control racist. La Raza literally means the race. Our traitor-in-chief is very pro-amnesty. We should pass immigration reform. Current Homeland Security Secretary Jay Johnson calls for amnesty and says that illegal immigrants have earned the right to be U.S. citizens. You know, by coming here illegally. Jay Johnson is the grandson of Charles S. Johnson, who was the nation's foremost scholar in the field of black sociology funded by the Rockefellers. The current director of the White House Domestic Policy Council is Cecilia Munoz, former senior vice president for the Office of Research, Advocacy, and Legislation at La Raza. I'm Cecilia Munoz, and I'm the director of intergovernmental affairs at the White House, and I'm also an advisor to President Obama on immigration issues. 
Did you get that? A person advising the pro-amnesty liar-in-chief on immigration affairs was a former vice president in an office of a Hispanic supremacy group called The Race. And the founder of La Raza, Jose Gutierrez, is very outspoken against the gringo. We recognize that the barriers to our integrating into the society and, and to uplifting ourselves is the gringo. The gringo who's put the barriers, who makes us, you know, drop out of school, who keeps us in bad health, who doesn't pay us good wages, who prohibits our unions, and so on and so on and so on. So until we get rid of those elements, we're not going to progress. We're not going to be free. So yes, the gringo must go. We were convinced that we were the generation that was going to recover uh, the, the land in the Southwest, not by taking the land, but by taking political control of the institutions in the land. We remain a hunted people. Now you think you have a destiny to fulfill in this land that historically has been ours for 40,000 years. And we're a new mestizo nation. This is our homeland. We cannot, we will not, and we must not be made illegal in our own homeland. We are not immigrants that came from another country to another country. We are migrants free to travel the length and breadth of the Americas because we belong here. We are millions. We just have to survive. We have an aging white America. They are not making babies. They are dying. It's a matter of time. The explosion is in our population. We're the future and we have potential power. When are we going to realize it? When are we going to paint the White House brown? I don't think so. <laughs> Make sure you check out Mr. Gutierrez's book, A Chicano Manual on How to Handle Gringos. A look at La Raza's list of contributors for 2012 shows some of the largest corporations in America, along with many companies that are either directly owned or controlled by the Rockefeller family for quite some time. It's also interesting to note that La Raza receives contributions from some organizations that are always asking for donations from us, including the American Cancer Society, American Diabetes Association, and the American Heart Association. So they get you to give them money and they give it to La Raza. Other donors of note include the U.S. Army Reserve, CIA, CDC, Health and Human Services, Homeland Security, HUD, the U.S. Department of Labor, and the Department of the Treasury. Both La Raza and MALDEF were created by the Ford Foundation and are very well funded by Ford along with the Gates and Rockefeller Foundations, the very people who want us poisoned with vaccines and GMOs, and who aren't afraid to admit that they're proud to be secretly working to depopulate and destroy the U.S. These groups spend a lot of their millions on advertising. These are just some of the ads I saw while researching this video, and not a single anti-amnesty ad went by. David Rockefeller's Center for Latin American Studies has been exploring how to Latinize the U.S. for many years publishing books like Latinos Remaking America, Integrating the Americas, and Passing Lines, Sexuality and Immigration, which seeks to stimulate dialogue on the role of sexuality and sexual orientation in immigration to the U.S. from Latin America and the Caribbean. I don't own this book, but I wonder if it ties in somehow with the Rockefeller Foundation's decades-long campaign to make homosexuality the norm and destroy the family. What's wrong with that? David Rockefeller brags on page 439 of his book Memoirs that he's met every Mexican head of state since World War II, several of them many times. How unfortunate for the people of Mexico. When the Rockefeller Foundation brought their Green Revolution to Mexico in the 1940s, the country was growing sufficient food to feed its population and was a net food exporter, sending vegetables, fruit, cattle, and coffee to the United States. The USDA had deemed it largely self-sufficient in food and fiber. By the 1950s, the Rockefeller schemes caused the Mexican government to have to begin importing larger and larger quantities of grain every year. Food production continued to decline, pushing small farmers off the land, replacing them with huge agribusiness, and pushing millions of peasants across the border to the north, which was the plan all along. It's no coincidence that the superhero at the Boston false flag migrated here illegally from Central America. The Rockefeller-controlled media wasted no time before saying, thank God he did so. Look at what a great thing that turned out to be. 
In this Boston Globe article, the writer is glad that Carlos wasn't deported when he was illegal because Jeff Bowman is alive because of it. Also that a fitting tribute to him would be to grant citizenship to all the illegals currently here and goes on to say that most of them come here to work, not live off the government dole. Though Judicial Watch points to actual Census Bureau data that reveals that most U.S. families headed by illegal immigrants use taxpayer-funded welfare programs on behalf of their American-born children, and that the majority of households across the country benefited from publicly funded welfare programs are headed by immigrants. On another site, the article states that whatever crimes illegal immigrants commit, at least they're not flying planes into buildings and building bombs to kill Americans. 